My husband, Leslie Witt, was without a doubt the most remarkable and loving person that I have ever known. He loved and appreciated life more than anyone that I knew. And I knew that he loved me, and he loved Sarah and Hannah and all of his friends and family. His kindness, wisdom, charm, humor, and love for life and those around him made him what he was. Friday is his birthday, and was his custom, he prepared a list of what he wanted. And he would give me the list to choose something off of and, and to share the list with other people because there were lots of things on the list. Uh, but there would be weird things, you know, like screws for the Hammond organ and a uh, replacement piece for it or something like that. And occasionally it was something big, but most of the time it was just little things that he wanted. And um, he said he didn't want people to waste their money on something he didn't want. So, but this, this, this list came up at Christmas, at birthdays, at Father's Day, whatever the occasion was. And um, Les also would ask his friends for favors. He didn't mind asking his friends for favors. He might ask Floyd for a pot of mustard greens or Miss Edith Young for her strawberry shortcake. But they knew that he, too, wanted them to ask him for favors. And he would do whatever he could for them. And the Youngs today provided all of this for us. And I think it's such a tribute to him and to their friendship that they had. Les was not materialistic at all. Uh, he wanted a lot of things now. I'm not saying that he didn't, but he was not materialistic. He seldom had money in his pocket because he always gave it away. He just couldn't keep it. If anybody asked him for a dollar or ten dollars or whatever he had in his pocket, he gave it to them. He was just like that. When he was, uh, when this 21-year-old long-haired hippie came to Alexandria in 1974, he had a vision for the Alexandria Zoo immediately. He vowed to do everything that he could to improve the zoo, even if it meant losing his job to accomplish it. And that, uh, it came close a couple of times. Um, it became his passion, and he wanted to make things happen just as quickly as he could. I felt sometimes that he could see the urgency for things when no, when no one else understood what that urgency was. He knew. He loved to tell people that when he began working at the Alexandria Zoo, he stayed on probation for three years because at the end of every six months, he would receive a letter from Mr. Bear, who was commissioner of uh, public works at that time, and it would say, I feel that it is in the best interest of the zoo and the city of Alexandria to extend your probationary period for another six months. <laughs> Les was probably unlike any employee the city has ever had. During the, the first year at the zoo, he decided to remove some of the old cages because he just felt that they were not suitable for animals to live in. And they had been there for a long time. So um, he grabbed a cutting torch and he started the demolition. Well, by the end of the day on Friday, he had received a letter from Mr. Bear, Knowing that he was probably in trouble, Les steamed the letter open and read, under no circumstances are you to demolish any cages or destroy any property at the Alexandria Zoo without my permission. Guess what he did? He sealed the letter back up and he went and put it on someone else's desk and then he spent the entire weekend cutting all these cages down. <laughs> so he said he just couldn't bear to put the animals back in them and if he lost his job over it, he lost his job over it. Of course, when asked about the letter, he denied that he ever received it and acted so astonished to find it on somebody else's desk. So, I didn't say he was perfect, but he believed in what was right, even if it was at a cost. Of course, the love he felt for Sarah and Hannah was just indescribable. He was so proud of them. He always recognized their talents and their abilities and always encouraged them 
to reach for their dreams. He always told me that he was so grateful to have been given the opportunity 34 years ago to fulfill his dream in the zoo profession, and he wanted to do the same for others. Thank goodness people believed in him. And I thank Dr. McGraw, who couldn't be here today, and FOTAS for believing in him. Les was a visionary. He had a way of pulling people into his vision, especially me. And I always came out of it a better person. Whatever the project was, no matter the struggles we went through, I came out a better person. In the 1980s, Les convinced me. Excuse me, just a second. In the 1980s, Les convinced me that I should tackle the position of education curator, which I had just been volunteering for before that. I didn't think I was qualified. I had been doing it so that the zoo could receive its accreditation. Les convinced me that I should do that. He made me believe in myself. He helped me prepare, and he encouraged me, just like he did so many other people. The zoo was something we couldn't just leave at work. No matter how hard we tried, one of us would always bring something up to discuss, and we would tell the other one to shut up. You know, if, if he brought it up, I'd say shut up, and if I brought it up, he'd say shut up, but we continued to talk about it anyway. Les's dedication to the city and the zoo is just inconceivable. No matter what obstacles he faced, he was so dedicated to the city and to being a civil servant. Each of the mayors that Les worked for became his mayor, and he would tell you that. That's my mayor. And I think that his loyalty was just unquestionable. But I must thank Kimberly Bourgeois and Lainey Bourgeois for being a part of our lives and their family. Kimberly made that courageous decision to donate her husband's heart and she shared Lainey with us. Lainey was only a few months old when her dad passed away. And getting to know her has been one of the most wonderful blessings in our life. She comes and spends time with us. She went on trips with the zoo with us. And she called him Pops, which always made him smile. I just can't express to you how much I love you and appreciate you. And Sarah and Hannah, too, feel the same way. Our Heavenly Father bestowed countless blessings upon us, and I was so grateful for those extra 14 years of life with him. Les loved his co-workers at the zoo. Some have been with him for 20 and 30 years. He depended on them. He respected them. And I think they all knew that even though he blew his top sometimes and lost his temper, that he didn't hold a grudge and he didn't stay angry. He loved you so much. And you are the zoo. Fotez has been there through thick and thin. What can I say? Following Les's vision and offering him support in his projects and for the both of us and our family. Docents, I can't do it without you, and I've told you that so many times, and now it's so important. Les loved his whole zoo family. In closing, I must say that great things have happened for Alexandria during the past 34 years. Because of the community support, the dedicated volunteers, the support of our city leaders, the tireless efforts of FOTAS, and the wonderful staff who became our extended family. It's been a tremendous team effort that was led by Les and supported by all of you. There's still work to be done, y'all. I hesitate to say this with city officials here, but the zoo's not finished, and it never will be because the zoo is never finished. Things must happen, improvements must take place, and I've promised Leslie that I would do everything I can to continue his vision. Um, it's a great one for our zoo. It's a great one for our community. It's a great one for the whole Sinlaw community. 
All I can say today is thank you so much for honoring him in this way. Our gentle giant will be in our hearts forever.